Hello and welcome to Interview With. This episode is local producers of the RVTV community, a producer profile. I'm your host, Jack Lanny. We welcome you to our show where we interview people in our community. Today we are going to talk to a local RVTV independent public access producer and learn about the work he does here at RVTV. The shows he produces and learn what makes him pursue his production work and discuss the relationships between his work here at RVTV and how it affects the local community. Today, we have as our special guest, David Glamour Dave Ninau. I met Dave here at RVTV and have helped produce some shows with him. Dave is an award-winning producer here at RVTV and has four different shows that air at various times. His most popular show here is Rogue Artisans and Crafters, which is the winner of the 2018 Southern Oregon Television Awards for Best Arts and Culture show. And now we welcome our guest, Dave Glamour, Dave Ninau. Thank you. Uh, welcome. Thank you, Jack. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. So just tell us a little bit about um, what, what did you do before becoming a producer here at RVTV? Well, uh, in the past, I used to work as a, uh, as a photographer mm -hmm. of fitness models, and I would design and operate official websites for models as a web designer and webmaster. Mm -hmm. And so I did that work for about 10 years, uh, working with a select group of, of fitness model clients. And uh, so I would run the websites for them. I'd do custom photo shoots for them. Uh, that would often require me to like uh, travel out of the area down to like Southern California oh. or Las Vegas or elsewhere to do the shoots. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so like I said, I did that for about 10 years until, uh, until my father had a couple of strokes. Oh. And then at that point, I kind of had to retire from my work. And I took care of my father as a full-time caregiver for about seven and a half years until he finally passed away last year. Oh. And, uh, and knowing that my father was going to pass away sometime in 2017 mm -hmm. uh, and being familiar with RVTV and the uh, studio certification classes they've, they've offered for mm -hmm. several years, uh, I felt like this was a good time to finally uh, attend the classes, kind of learn some video production to add to my mm -hmm. uh, photography skill set. And so I signed up for the studio certification class uh, at the beginning of 2017 and uh, and we went through those classes and uh, and I wound up uh, you know with the, with the studio certification class you had to produce a capstone show mm -hmm. and uh, and I wound up uh, the class decided to pursue uh, the show on a topic that I suggested which was the Crater Rock Museum uh, in Central Point uh, I was a member at the time uh -huh. and and so the class decided to make the show on, on them, and I used my contacts at the museum, and we mm. got that show produced. And I wound up being put in front of the camera, uh, co-hosting that show with a fellow classmate, Cassandra Wass. Oh, great. And, uh, and that was my first time uh, producing and being in front mm -hmm. of, the, of the TV uh, camera. And, uh, and after that was all done, uh, my co-host Cassandra and I talked about taking this that basic idea that we created for the capstone show and and developing it further into a regular series and that's what was done oh great so how did you become a photographer of models I mean it I can't believe they actually pay people to do this <laughs> yeah well uh, I had done photography before when I was in high school mm -hmm. and uh, and when I uh, when I the way I got connected uh, doing the fitness models is that I had uh, early on t when the internet was just kind of becoming a, uh, known to the general public, uh, I decided that I wanted to learn HTML programming to learn how to create my own websites. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and at the time I was beginning to, to notice uh, fitness models in, uh, in the muscle magazines on newsstands mm -hmm. like Muscle Mag International. And uh, one of those fitness models that had been on a couple of covers of Muscle Mag was Tara Caballero. Mm. And she was a favorite fitness model of mine at the time. I uh, created a fan page around Tara oh. as one of my very first websites that I ever created. And Tara happened to have found my fan page. And she emailed me and uh, was impressed with my uh, site about her. 
-hmm. and she was preparing to design, uh, get her own first official website created, mm -hmm. and asked if I would design her website. Wow. So, uh, so I did. We came to an agreement, and I designed and ran her official website. And then as we worked together, uh, and we, uh, at a certain point, she needed to create new content for her website. Mm -hmm. uh, so we had to arrange a new photo shoot. Uh, I arranged for us to all meet in Las Vegas with my best friend who lives down there, who's a professional photographer. Mm -hmm. And we did our first joint photo shoot together. And I kind of directed that photo shoot, and Tara was impressed with my view of things, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, asked me to uh, get some camera gear so I could photograph her. Oh, so right. that's what I did. I, I invested some uh, into some camera gear. Uh, instead of investing in new computer hardware. Mm -hmm. And then like a month or so after that was done, then we got together again in San Diego and we did a photo shoot. Mm -hmm. And that was our first photo shoot together where I was photographing mm -hmm. her. Awesome. And then she was impressed enough with the results of that shoot that she made me her official site photographer mm -hmm. in addition That's to uh, being her web designer and webmaster. Excellent. And then in the course of time, I also became her manager and. Oh. And you know we've okay. we've continued to work together for like the last 20 years, so uh, we've had a long working relationship. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, that's how I basically kind of got started mm -hmm. with the fitness models, uh -huh. photographing them because I, having Tara Caballero as uh, my uh, first client and at the time, she was really big in the fitness industry and like the equivalent of like you know Tara, uh, she was kind of like the Cindy Crawford of fitness at the time. Mm -hmm. So it made it easy for me to. Uh, to make contact with the other leading fitness mm -hmm. models in the industry. There was your end. That was my end. So, yeah. yeah. So, so how long did you work as a professional photographer? Well, I did that for about ten years until uh, until like I say until my father had his strokes and mm -hmm. he needed a full time caregiver and mm -hmm. and uh, so I kind of had to retire uh, to focus on my father. So mm. you know I did that. Yeah. And uh, so now, you know, now it's kind of, I've kind of transitioned into doing the TV production work, mm -hmm. uh, but I still try to get a photo shoot in once in a while. Well, great. So, and we have some uh, images of my uh, yeah. work that can be brought up. Yeah, let's, uh, let's look at some of your examples of your photography. Yeah. Drill it. So that's Tara Caballero. She's my very first model client mm. that was shot down in San Diego. And uh, that's an Im that is an image that I uh, title invitation. Uh, yeah, I think I would. Uh, yeah, I would take that invitation. Yeah. So. Uh, oh my. And that is uh, Devin Jones. She is a Canadian fitness model. That's the title. Uh, I titled that image measurements. That was shot in a studio down in Las Vegas. No comment. <laughs> and that's that is Leanna Ross. She's a fitness model uh, that uh, primarily lives in uh, in Las Vegas. So. Uh, I've done shoots with her, and that's uh, Sherry Gideon's. Uh, I call that Desert Traveler. That's shot in one of the lake beds mm. just outside of Las Vegas. I'd buy that luggage when yeah, you Yeah, yeah. So uh, that is Carmen Garcia. Uh, that is called Fit Apps. That was shot in a studio down in Las Vegas. And that's Aaron Ellington. That's I titled that The Lost Bride. Uh, it was shot in uh, some uh, desert dunes outside of Las Vegas, about a three-hour drive out of Vegas. Mm. Uh, that's Melissa Boudreau. She's a local fitness model uh, that I've worked with for several years here locally. That was shot in Lithia Park, actually. Oh. Yeah. That's Brenda Kelly. Uh, she's uh, a fitness model uh, mm -hmm. who's she competed numerous times over the years. She's mm -hmm. had numerous magazine appearances in uh, the different muscle magazines. Uh, mm -hmm. She's now down in Arizona. There's Devin Jones. You can actually see her face. That's called a yeah. Howdy Partner. <laughs> oh, that's not getting that. Yeah. No. And that's Carmen Garcia. You get to see her face there this time. Mm -hmm. That was shot uh, uh, at one of the resort pools in Las Vegas. That reminds me of my third grade school teacher, actually. Okay. I think I had her. <laughs> and uh, uh, that's Anita Child. She's an Oregon fitness uh, competitor uh, here in Oregon. Shot mm -hmm. her last summer. And that's Samantha Stacy. She is a model that used to live here locally, actually, and then uh, she moved up to uh, Washington. And then uh, last summer she came down to uh, to visit. And after like a couple of years of waiting, we finally were mm -hmm. able to get together and do a small shoot at uh, Bear Creek Park. And that's Ruby. She's a local actress uh, who mm -hmm. I've worked with through uh, Cafe Girl Productions. Oh, I've heard of them. Yeah. 
and that is Linda. She is a new amateur model that uh, I've met through one of the local stores mm -hmm. and really liked her look. And uh, she, uh, this is like her very first photo shoot. So that was actually done just a few weeks ago at oh. Lithia Park. And then that's Terror. That's, uh, I call that Goddess of the Seas. That's from <laughs> one of our last shoots down in San Diego. And then this is a sequence of, of images of Terra that were shot here locally at Applegate uh, Lake oh, uh, when she was nice. here a few years ago. So the first yeah. last image was that she was a priestess. This is an image that's a part of the fantasy story sequence, and she's a warrior here. Warrior, yes. And that's her warrior portrait. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was shot at uh, the uh, Medford Railroad Park. Oh, yeah. I have to go there. Yeah. Uh, you won't find her there, but, oh. you know. Then what's the point? What's the point? <laughs> <laughs> she was just there the one time. Oh, but, uh, that's great. Those are beautiful pictures of beautiful subjects. Yeah, it makes it yeah. uh, makes the job easy. Yeah, uh, you that know, would be as a, far as... Uh, like I said, I, I would probably do that for free. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so is your photography work responsible for your nickname of Glamour Day? Yeah, in a way, because at the time that, uh, that I was active as a photographer, mm -hmm. Uh, I was also, basically I spent my life either I was working with my model clients and mm -hmm. photographing them or I was playing pool. And so that was my life, photographing women, playing pool. And That's terrible. And uh, terrible. well, it's good work when you can get it, you it know. It sounds like it. Uh, but, uh, you know, as a result of my pool playing uh, <laughs> and being a fairly strong player here locally, uh, you know, yeah, I just kind of got tagged the nickname Glamour Dave. Mm -hmm. And so that's how that came about. And it works well for my career work. So it's a good name. You're definitely it. pulling this off and it's all <laughs> going together well. Yeah. I'm here well, to tell you, you know, Dave. Once I decided that I had to, that I was going to be doing TV work mm -hmm. and getting in front of the camera, uh, you know, it was uh, a matter of just kind of, uh, kind of maximizing out that glamour day persona. Mm. So, yeah. Seems like it's a lot of fun. <laughs> it is. <laughs> so, so what made you want to become a producer here at RVTV? Well, you know, I knew that I kind of needed to kind of uh, restart my life mm -hmm. uh, after my father was going to pass, and I needed to kind of, kind of go into a new direction. And, and uh, I felt like the learning video production was like kind of the next stage of, of based on what I had done already. Mm -hmm and that the, the classes here at RVTV was a really good way to kind of get that introduction to, uh, to video production work. And, uh, and so, it, and it's worked out great. It's mm -hmm. been a great uh, experience here at RVTV. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, mm -hmm. I feel like uh, there's a lot of positive new directions and, mm -hmm. and opportunities for me in my life mm -hmm. uh, doing this work. And uh, so, yeah, that's, it's it's been great. Great. Um, what shows do you currently produce here at RVTV? Well, I ask. Yeah, I currently have four series here four. at the studio. So the very first one that we started with was uh, Gems of the Road Valley, mm -hmm. and uh, and I produced that show with my co-host Cassandra Wass. And Cassandra and I like to give uh, focus exposure to uh, local. Uh, businesses and organizations and groups and people doing positive things here in the Road Valley. And then uh, in addition to that, I have Rogue Artisans and Crafters, mm -hmm. and that's a show where I interview local artists and craftspeople here in mm -hmm. Southern Oregon. Mm -hmm. And I've done uh, 30 episodes of that show wow, 30. Uh, since I started that. And then I have the, uh, the So Not So Late Night Glamour <laughs> Dave show, which is my take of a late night classic comedy talk show. And so I've taken a lifetime of watching Carson and Letterman mm -hmm. and Craig Ferguson. Greats. Yeah, and, uh, and I've uh, taken a lot of my favorite comic routines that they've done from those shows, and I've ripped them off and cheapened them down to the public access level for, uh, for an occasional Friday live show that I do here at the studio. So I started that this summer. I've gotten four episodes produced mm -hmm. so far. And, uh, and I've got a couple more uh, dates uh, next month to do. Mm -hmm. And I'll just, you know, occasionally we'll get uh, the occasional date each quarter mm -hmm. and produce new episodes. And I've got some mm. uh, more ideas for some comic uh, routines that are cheap ripoffs of, of Letterman and, and Ferguson that I'm going to develop 
uh, for for the next set of shows. So it'll be funny. Sounds like you're busy. <laughs> in fact, uh, I'm going to take this opportunity yeah. to let's take a look at a video clip of the shows that you produce and host at this yeah, time. That's if right, you would. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Roll it, please. Today, we are talking about the local women's derby, which is called the Southern Oregon Derby. Right, and we happen to have as our special guest for the derby, we happen to have uh, Melinda Favreau, mm -hmm. aka Mountain Mel. That's right. And Sonia Herbold, aka mm -hmm. Calamity, Correct. who are here to talk about the derby. Yeah. So, yes. welcome to the show. Welcome, Thank you, girls. Thanks for having us. Today, we will talk to William S. Phillips about his life as an artist and the work that he pursues today with his art. And so we welcome Bill to the show. David, thanks for having me. Oh, I'm glad. Pleasure. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a great thing for me because I've been uh, a fan of your work since uh, seeing it at the Red Baron Lounge when I was about 10 years old. <laughs> so that means this is take like a long uh, path for the both of us to come together. Easy does it. But uh, <laughs> it's, uh, I'm honored to have you here and to talk about your work. Absolutely. The report that we got on you was that, uh, that, uh, that you went through some kind of a competition to basically win the right of being Wonder Woman. Yes, right? yes. Because you are, the, uh, you are the ambassador of the Amazonian nation of Themyscira. Yes, yeah. We have a lot of competitions. We got archery, we got you know, weightlifting, but not with like little weights like you guys uh, use, yeah. like actual like buildings and stuff like that. So. Yeah, right. Well, yeah, because because your your powers are like really, uh, literally, uh, God blessed. Because mm -hmm. my my report says that your uh, father is uh, Zeus, the yes. uh, the head of the Greek pantheon of Greek gods. Yes. Yeah. Uh, clay and Zeus, pretty much. He he brought me to life out of clay. So yeah. Welcome to the small interview with Glamour Dave. I'm your host, David Glamour Dave Nenow, and this happens to be the first episode of this new series. Uh, this happens to be not only the first episode, it's also an emergency show edition because <laughs> the reason that the show even exists is because I had uh, a guest cancel for uh, Rogue Artisans and Crafters, and I needed to fill the time here at the studio. So. The small interview is my backup emergency show production whenever a guest cancels on one of my other shows. And so uh, today, I happen to have two wonderful friends of mine uh, uh, that are going that I'm going to interview. Uh, and so I have Leah Dougal, <laughs> owner of Cafe Girl Productions, Brittany Rhea, director and uh, music producer. composer and actress and producer. Uh, and producer for Cafe Girl Productions. And so we are just going to have a nice, fun conversation about everything that is going on in the world of Cafe Girl Productions and everything else in the lives of these two lovely, wonderful women uh, <laughs> that, I, that I consider f wonderful friends. Uh, and so let's get the interview going. Oh, so we're back. Yeah. Yeah. And so that, that last, uh, uh, the very end of that segment, uh, uh, that clip is uh, showcased my fourth show, mm -hmm. The Small Interview with Glamour Dave. Mm -hmm. And that is what I call my emergency backup show production. <laughs> so in the wings. Yeah. So it's like any time that a guest uh, cancels on me at the last minute for one of my other shows, mm -hmm. uh, particularly for like Rogue Artisans, if uh, that's happened uh, a couple of times, and and so I still have to like make use, fill my time here. Mm -hmm. So uh, when that happens, then I just instantly drag. Uh, someone from my crew and say we're going to have an interview mm -hmm. and it becomes a small interview with Glamour Day. Mm -hmm. And so <laughs> I got, got the first episode done a couple weeks ago. Uh, I'll do, as soon as I do two more episodes, it'll become an official series here at the studio. Oh. But it's always just going to be like an emergency backup edition. Well, that's, you know. that's life here at <laughs> RVTV. Yeah, you've got to uh, be flexible here mm -hmm. at RVTV. So let me ask you, um, when do your shows broadcast on RVTV? What's the schedule? Oh, man, I've got, uh, that is, uh, with four shows, uh, three that are regular series at this point, mm -hmm. they're all over the place. I think like on uh, Gems of the Road Valley, uh, it has, there's like Thursday and Friday uh, time slots. In fact, I've got some lower thirds for the time uh, slots that can be brought up. Uh, for each of the shows, mm -hmm. uh, but I think like 8 p.m. Uh, on Thursday nights and 
Fridays at 9 p.m., I think, for Gems of the Rogue Valley. Mm -hmm. Rogue Artisans and Crafters, I've got, uh, I think, Tuesdays at 8.30 and Thursdays at 11.30. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the, the Glamour Dave show, that's like a Tuesdays at 2 a.m., so that's... That's the wow. funniest. That's the funniest time slot they could get for that show. <laughs> yeah, they and stay uh, for that one. and then I think uh, uh, Thursdays at 8 p.m. Uh, you know, or like the slots for uh, where those shows are regularly uh, broadcast. So yeah. yeah, it's it's hard keeping track of them all. With yeah, the, with four of them out four there. Four shows out there. So yeah. Okay. So let me ask you, what was your process for creating each of your shows here at RVTV? Could you just well, elaborate on that? yeah, well, with Gems, that was, like I say, that was, we started that, Cassandra and I uh, started that after we did the Capstone show, which we titled Gem of the Road Valley, since mm -hmm. it was all about the, the Crater Rock Museum. Mm -hmm. So uh, we just kind of decided to take the theme of, of featuring local groups mm -hmm. uh, and, and turn it into a regular series uh, together. And so, you know, with Gems, we have featured uh, Rogue Retreat for all their homeless support services and we've mm -hmm. uh, we've featured the Snyder Art Museum, oh, okay. uh, the, the Science Works Museum, mm -hmm. uh, the Roller Derby uh, Women, oh, yeah. uh, the Oregon Chocolate Festival, the Ashland Film Festival. Uh, we've done like 15 episodes so uh, it's you know it's all about kind of giving exposure to really wonderful people and, okay. and groups in the valley. With Rogue Artisans, me and a fellow producer Alex McLaughlin here at the studio we're talking about, uh, we kind of were talking one day and we both found that we had similar ideas for kind of focusing on the local art scene. Mm -hmm. And so okay. him and I together kind of developed uh, the concept for rogue artisans and crafters. And, uh, and then yeah, I've just kind of taken that and, mm -hmm. and uh, I go out to the different art galleries okay. uh, here in the valley and meet okay. with artists and okay. find them. So let me ask you something. How difficult it is, it, is it to become a successful producer at RVTV? Well, you know, it takes, um, it takes a bit of a commitment of time, mm -hmm. you know. This is How all much? volunteer work here at the studio. So all the producers here volunteer their time to produce and create water shows that, that, they, uh, that they feel strongly about, mm -hmm. you know. And, uh, and I would tell anyone that wants to uh, kind of consider uh, getting involved here at RVTV mm -hmm. uh, to, you know, you sign up for the classes, become a certified producer, mm -hmm. uh, you make the effort to kind of get involved uh, with working on other people's shows mm -hmm. to kind of get really comfortable with the production process. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, and then follow your heart. That's mm -hmm. the next, next piece of advice I'd say. You know, you mm -hmm. want to, if you're going to develop a show, uh, you know, find uh, those topics that uh, that are important to you and uh, and develop your shows around those those topics that uh, mm -hmm. that mean something to you right so how does one get a show to be put on TV well at RBT well once you uh, kind of, once you become a certified producer mm -hmm. uh, you each quarter here at the studio we have a producers meeting oh. and so you have to come in and and you basically have to bid for a production time slot uh, uh, for, uh, for the following quarter. Mm -hmm. And uh, once you get a production time slot or more than one production time slot, depending upon how mm -hmm. active you really want to be, uh, then you, know, you, you, you just kind of work up in your mind what, what it is that you want to do your show about. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, it, if, you have to, if you're going to have guests, you've got to go out and find the guests. Mm -hmm. You've got to kind of work, work out the plans for the interview, how you want to, uh, what questions you're going to need to, to address for whatever the topic is that you're going to be dealing with. Uh, you know, you have to recruit your crew among mm -hmm. the fellow producers that are active here uh, at the studio that are all volunteers. So you got to recruit your volunteer producers to come in at the appointed time to uh, assign them their, their uh, particular mm -hmm. uh, positions uh, in the crew. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, you have to find your director, you have mm -hmm. to find your, your uh, graphics person, your camera operators, you know, it takes a, a good mm -hmm. crew to put a good show together. So um, what kind of budget would you need to do one of these shows on RVTV? Well, my budget is uh, 60 plus dollars per uh, production. So That's we all have economical. To, yeah, we all have to pay 
for the studio time. Okay. The studio time here is 30 bucks for a three hour block of time. Oh. Okay, so, so then you also need to feed your crew because mm -hmm. since no one is being paid to do any of this work, we all pay each other by bringing in food to make sure the crews are fed. So uh, at that point, uh, I typically spend another 30 bucks uh, in food uh, for each production that I do. So, you okay. know, 60 bucks is what I typically spend, but sometimes I've spent more than that if I have to like bring in certain props or do something special mm -hmm. for a given show. So, I don't know, are any strange things happen during a show production? <laughs> yeah, well, I've had, um, I've had like the, uh, the uh, teleprompter uh, script uh, go black on me at the end of a show. <laughs> and not good. Uh, not good. And so then I've had to kind of rely on my own memory and kind of on the fly mm -hmm. do my do my wrap up uh, mm -hmm. uh, without my teleprompter script. And oh my. Uh, and my teleprompter script for uh, Rogue Artisans and Crafters uh, has kind of a long wrap up because I'm thinking uh, I'm thinking my guest, I'm thinking my crew, I'm thinking RVTV and their facility, I'm mentioning time mm -hmm. slots uh, for when the shows can be viewed and all this stuff. So it's, you know, it's about a two minute mm -hmm. teleprompter read. And, uh, and so one day, literally the, the teleprompter just went black just mm -hmm. as I was getting ready to do my, uh, my, my closing wrap up. Oh and, joy. Uh, yeah, that was. <laughs> joy. So uh, have you been recognized on the streets in the public? Uh, I have a handful of times. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah. Is that a good thing? Uh, so far, it hasn't been a problem. You know, uh, people that have recognized oh. me um, have. Uh, um, well, looks like we have to wrap it up. Oh, sorry well. about that. <laughs> that is the end of our interview with. This episode was local producers of the RV TV community. We thank you for joining us. We wish you to thank our guest, RV TV producer and show host. Dave, Glamour Dave, Ninao, for agreeing to come on to the show and discuss his work here at RVTV. Now, on how being a producer and 